remove that. Take out the uh, impingement plate. I'm taking out the wear plate on the burn pot. The holes that are on this right here are unique to this stove. The compact version of this has a different hole pattern and that's important to know. Right here and right here, underneath this thing right here, there are two uh, hex nuts, they're half inch, and those push the burn pot back into the stove. And there's a gasket between the back of the wall and the burn pot. And when that makes a nice tight seal, the, uh, see if I can point with this thing, there's a hole right down here, that's your weep hole for the igniter. And that has to be making a nice tight seal for the hot air to come through there. I'll, when I take this out, I'll show you, but this edge right here, if this edge of the burn pot is not flat, and it's like bowed out, kind of like this, when it's up against the back of the stove, there's a gap, and the air from there is gonna take the path of least resistance, and it's gonna go up the back, and it's gonna come out, and you're not going to ignite. Um, additionally, if this is loose in here at all, the air will just slip up the back side. And if you look right here, you see, see that mark that's right there? That's from the heat from this, slipping up the back side of this and catching on the back of the impingement plate. Um, it's actually old because uh, I replaced this burn pot last year. So let me show you how this thing or what this thing looks like when we take it out. Well, almost. Almost. <laughs> Here's the burn pot right here. And it sits in the stove like this, and you can see on the back side, this goes over the feed, and this goes over the air intake, and this hole right here is the weep hole. And so the gasket has to seat up against this, or the air is going to pass its way up the back side. If your stove's having trouble igniting, first thing that you can do before you remove this is tighten up these two screws that are down there as tight as you can get them and you'll probably see an immediate improvement. Uh, if that doesn't do it, then you're probably going to need another gasket on the back side of this. Um, if this piece right here, if this is warped, see how this one's straight? But over time, it will start to warp right here from the heat inside the burn pot. And it will cause this whole back face to become out of plumb, kind of concave like this. And then the air will kind of come up the back side of it. You can take two gaskets, put one, two gaskets on there, right there, and then slip this thing back on, tighten the two screws underneath, and you'll get a nice tight seal so that your uh, igniter will fire off properly. Um, also, <clears throat> the wear plate sets right down in here like that. If you have the PDVC, there's going to be a big box mounted right here that restricts the airflow. Um, in the bigger one, this is going to be uh, all open. So your wear plate goes in there like that. And if your wear plate is warping or deteriorating faster than you think it should, if we look down in here, see that hole right down in there? Right down there, see that hole? There's one on the other side too, right? over, oh, there we go, right there, see it? There it is. So, if you're looking at this burn pot from the top, this area right here, and this area right here, it's hollow in there. So the air that's coming in from down here goes into these holes on the sides, passes up through this heated metal, gets superheated, and then is splayed out over the fire across those holes. And if this is plugged, and if this is plugged, the air can't go around and over the top of the fire. So it all comes from, it all comes from down below, down in here. And if we get too much air 
going through this spot right here, it's gonna put a hole inside this. So the remedy, if you're going through wear plates like crazy, clean out the side, clean out the side. And I'll show you how we do that. Just turn on the vacuum, and we're gonna bang the sides of this, and all of the stuff is gonna come flying down, flying out of it. Coming down. Look. Look at all that. So, look at all that. Look at everything that we got out of there. All of this was on this side. So, we'll vacuum that out and then we'll do the same on this side. Quite as much as the other side but still quite a bit of stuff okay so we're able to clean this thing out and I went and checked for a uh, gasket out in my truck and I don't have one of all the things I have with me today I didn't bring that at least I thought I did but maybe I forgot it I don't know um, what I'm mostly concerned with is that the gasket is covering this hole right here. That's really important. So we're going to try and salvage this one and I'll come back um, maybe another time and replace the gasket for her. Um, but as long as we cover this hole with the gasket and we get it tight on there, uh, the stove should be able to ignite uh, just fine. It's really just that hole that we're worried about. Watch this. Watch the pro. Just like that. Now, what you want to do is you want to hold the burn pot right there like that and then tighten up until you kiss up against it. Just like that. Then we're going to come over on this side. And then I usually crank the left one until I can't get any tighter. And then I'll come back to the right one. And now this one's loose again. So we'll crank that one nice and tight. And then we'll come back to the left one. We can usually get a quarter turn on that, and then we can usually get one more quarter turn here. And I can actually hear the gasket going. So I'm pretty tight up against it. And then our wear plate, we're just going to scrape off some of the carbon that's on here. Look at that, came off of my fingers. But we'll give that a good little scrape. There's the tool. There it is. And then 
around the circle right here, we're going to have all kinds of carbon that builds up on the bottom. And the hole is this big. And the thing, the auger actually free floats in there. It moves around. And the, uh, the carbon will build up on the bottom of it. And when it does, this middle edge right here will force the uh, auger to go up. And then it will scrape along the top of this. And then if you hear like the noise going when it's running, it's usually because there's carbon built up there. And that also puts a lot of stress on the motor in the back. So it's important that the carbon that develops on this bottom of this ring, that this be kind of taken off out of there. So, and anyway, just with a regular screwdriver and a little tool, just to kind of tap it, it comes right off. It's not on there very hard. There we go, see look, all of it came right off. And then tap tap, tap tap, and then over on this side, tap tap. And then a little bit on the auger shaft itself. Perfect. Tap and tap. There we go. All cleaned off. And then Vacuum this up. All right. The other thing that we need to do, and it's impossible for me to show you this because it's so dark inside the stove, but where is it? It is right. Where is it in the stove? It is right. Oh, it's so dark in there. Oh, there it is. Okay, so on the PDVC, uh, the hole that I'm looking for is gonna be located like right there, kind of just to the right of the burn pot, um, maybe about halfway up the wall. But on the, the bigger model, it's actually on the outer wall over here. And it's about, it's about this high, all the way over on the back. And there's like a little metal tube that's extending there. And there's a, uh, there's a pressure switch inside the stove mounted over on this side that is looking for this door to be sealed because when this is running there's negative pressure inside like a vacuum and it sucks on the switch and it closes the contacts uh, so the power that comes from the control board flows out of the control board oh, let's see here let's move this up So the power that comes out of the control board, it flows, there's a vacuum in here, it sucks the switch, the switch closes, the power that's being sent from the controller comes up to this lid switch right here. When that's depressed, it flows through the switch, and then it goes down into that vacuum switch, and then that's gonna be closed on the circuit because this door is closed, and then the power goes to the auger motor. Um, if this door is open, the top auger stops feeding. And it won't send you an error report on it because there's no way that it can know that. Um, the control board doesn't actually um, look for a uh, continuity in the signal or any return signal coming back. It's basically just powering the auger. So if your stove's not feeding pellets and you look at the top auger and it's not turning, it's either because that hose or switch is malfunctioning, the door's not closed, or the switch up here, the hopper lid switch has malfunctioned, or this right here is not actually depressing the switch down. Uh, and in some cases, rare cases, if this gasket right here is missing on the hopper lid, um, and you don't have enough pellets in the stove, the pressure switch that's over here will actually roll out um, because it's pulling more air from up here than from inside the burn pot and it doesn't have enough of a tight um, airtight 
uh, seal and then the switch doesn't work. I've only seen that like once or twice. Um, most of the time, this is okay. <coughs> we can take our impingement plate. I'm gonna put this back in over here and close the door. And then from uh, just a maintenance standpoint, the front of this is done. Uh, we basically just swept all the ash down, made sure that the little hose for the pressure switch over on this side is clear, that the burn pot's clear, that the feed tube has all the carbon broken off, that the gasket uh, is going to make a nice of a nice tight of a seal, that our burn pot's not warped, and that the air coming into the burn pot can actually flow up the sides and over the top. So now we're going to go uh, to the back of the unit. I'm actually going to spin this around. And then I'll show you everything that's inside there.